um, at the direction of the council last Thursday night, um, I was instructed to, as a result of the ethics committee, investigating committee, all recusing themselves, the council tasked me with finding an unbiased third party to review the, um, the complaints and in, on their behalf. Um, I contacted the law firm of Wilson Morton Downs, who has done this type of work before, and they agreed to do it. Um, they provided me with the results today, and I'd just like to read this letter into the record. Um, and it pretty much explains the process. Um, it's addressed to me, and it says, the city of Chambly received several ethics complaints against city council member Thomas Hogan, which relate to property on Clarewood Terrace within the city. In response, the mayor appointed an investigating committee composed of three council members and the city attorney pursuant to city code section 31-28. However, all four members of the investigating committee have recused themselves for further deliberation of the matter. You have asked us, Wilson, Morton, and Downs, as a neutral and knowledgeable third party to perform the role of investigating committee in the above reference matter. We were provided with 10 separate ethics complaints against Council and Hogan, but all 10 of the complaints are identical with the exception of the name and address of the person complaining. Incidentally, we note that all 10 complaints, I'm sorry, all 10 complainants are residents of Clarewood Terrace where Council and Hogan resides. Because the complaints are identical in substance, we will treat them as a single complaint for purposes of perform performing our role as investigating committee. The allegations of the complaint against Councilman Hogan may be restated as follows. Number one, Councilman Hogan has attempted to secure approval of several variances for his property. Number two, Councilman Hogan has attempted to utilize his current position to secure a business deal with developer Gus Pounds. The role of the investigating committee pursuant to the city's ethics code is to make an initial review of an ethics complaint and to determine whether the complaint sets forth significant facts and circumstances so as to warrant a hearing before the Board of Ethics. The allegation that Councilman Hogan has applied for a variance simply does not state a violation of an ethics ordinance, even if it was true. Councilman Hogan, like every other property owner, has a right to apply for a variance. The allegation that Councilman Hogan has used his current position to secure a business deal with a developer could potentially be a violation of the ethics ordinance. However, we have reviewed the complaint and determined that it lacks factual specificity in its allegations. The complaint also lacks any evidence whatsoever to support its charges. The complaint, the complaint is so lacking in detail and evidentiary support that we can only conclude that the complainant I'm sorry, the complaint as stated is unjustified, frivolous, or patently unfounded. Those are in quotes because that's straight from the ordinance. Therefore, our conclusion in the role of the investigating committee is that the ethics complaints against Councilman Hogan should be dismissed pursuant to City Code Section 31-28. We note that the city's ethics ordinance does not appear to contain any provision that would prevent the complainants from making a subsequent complaint that more fully sets forth their allegation of an ethics violation and provides any evidence that they may have in support of such allegation. The complainant should be advised that the ethics ordinance requires a verified complaint, meaning that the complaint should include a statement that is brought, that it is brought in good faith based on information within the personal knowledge of the complainant, and a verified <coughs> complaint must also be signed and notarized. So the very result is that they dismiss that allegation. So those allegations are, are okay. Very good. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda under staff action items, unless we had any other announcements and presentations. No. Very good. Uh, City Clerk, we have the approval of the minutes. City Council public hearing work session June 13, 2013. Motion to approve City Council public hearing work session June 13, 2013. That's submitted by City Clerk. Second. So we there any discussion. Motion and second to approve is submitted. All those in favor? That passes unanimously. Uh, City Clerk under approval of minutes to City Council public hearing regular meeting June 18. Uh, motion to approve uh, City Council public hearing regular meeting June 18, 2013. That's submitted by City Clerk. 
Second. Any discussion? Very good. So we have a motion and second to approve as submitted. All those in favor? <coughs> pass it unanimously. Still under approval of minutes, we have number three, City Council call meeting June 21st. Uh, motion to approve City Council call meeting June 21st. Mm -hmm. And then a pass it by City Court. Second. Any discussion? We have a motion of second to approve as submitted. All those in favor? That passes unanimously. And the fourth one, we have approval of minutes. City Council called meeting July 2nd. And a motion to approve City Council call meeting Ju July 22nd, 2013. That's submitted by City Court. Second. Very good. Any discussion? So we have a motion and second to approve as submitted. All those in favor? That passes unanimously. Uh, we have everything under City Manager. Under the development department, we have one variance. Excuse at, me, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I, we, I, I skipped one. I'm sorry. We have uh, A2, revised intergovernmental agreement with Cap County for election services. A uh, motion to approve the revised intergovernmental agreement with Cap County for election services as recommended by the city clerk. Second. Very good. Is there any discussion? Apologize for So we have a motion and a second to approve as submitted. All those in favor? That passes unanimously. All right. Next item. We have under, uh, nothing under city manager, under development department, we have one, a variance at 3223 Claremont Terrace. Motion to approve the variance at 3223 Claremont Terrace as submitted. Second. Very good. Is there any discussion? Joe, I have a question. Um, legally, since the recusion, the recuse himself during ethics, how does that impact as far as a vote tonight? Should it be, should it be recused as well? Yeah. Could you elaborate further, please? Um, well, whether they were dismissed or not, the way I would get it is a separate petition. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on this item? To, just for clarification, so uh, to the city attorney, so it says this what this is considered two separate entities, so to say. Well, not really two separate entities, but the issue of the ethics doesn't, although it seems intertwined, you can still vote on the variance, even if ethics violations were upheld. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Is there any further discussion? Do we have a motion and a second to approve the variances as requested by the applicants? All those in favor? Three opposed? Mr. Wade in opposition. Very good. Item number C2, preliminary plat 3223 Firewood Terrace. Motion to approve um, as submitted uh, with the conditions as recommended by city staff. Second. Very good. Is there any discussion on this item? So we have a motion and a second to approve as submitted with, uh, and as recommended with staff with conditions. All those in favor? We have three in favor, in opposition. We have one in opposition. The record shows that Mr. Oakley is not uh, present for the vote, so abstention on both the slides too. 